Hello all, welcome to Ra Online and uh, today I will be sharing my experience on transverse thoracic muscle plane and the pecto interfacial plane block which is parasternal blocks and uh, myself Dr. Nagaraja PS who is an associate professor in Sri Jayadeva Institute of Cardiovascular Sciences and Research Bangalore. It is a pleasure and privilege to be presenting in uh, Ra Online. Before getting into the uh, block per se, let us understand the anatomy. To start with, uh, the thoracic cage. The thoracic cage is made up of 12 pairs of ribs, 12 pairs of ribs which consists of, these are the 12 pairs of ribs, this is the first rib, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, so 8, 9, 10. So till the seventh rib, from the first rib till the seventh rib, all these ribs are attached to the manubrium sternum through their costal cartilages. These are the costal cartilages. So, all of the ribs are attached to the manubrium sternum. So, that is why they are termed as true ribs. And 8, 9 and 10, they are attached to the costal cartilage of the 7th rib. If you can notice over here, this is attached over here, this is attached over here, this is attached over here. So, that is why these are called as false ribs. Of the false ribs, the 11th and the 12th rib are also called as false ribs and they are also termed as floating ribs. So, these are the true ribs, these are the false ribs. Now, when we understand intercostal spaces, there will be 11 pairs of intercostal spaces. So, to mark 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 and 11 with the floating ribs, the floating ribs 10 and 11. So, there are 11 pairs of intercostal spaces of which there are in this intercostal spaces are bounded by topographically, topographically from external to internal. There is an external intercostal muscle, this is the external intercostal muscle which is the exterior most one and then you have the internal intercostal muscle and the innermost intercostal muscle. As the name suggests, the external is the exterior one which takes attachment, which takes attachment from the lower border of the upper rib to the upper border of the lower rib. And how are the direction of the fibers? The direction of the fibers are different for external and internal. The direction of the fibers run from, they run anteriorly, they run anteriorly downwards and medially, they run anteriorly, downwards and medially. Whereas when you come to the uh, very important point about external intercostal muscle is that when you clearly notice this green color muscle which is the external intercostal muscle, this is external intercostal muscle, they don't, they, they are absent or deficient at the sternum. If you can see, they are deficient near to the sternum, they stop at the costal cartilages, they stop here, this is the external intercostal muscle just stop here at the costal cartilages. So, that is a very important point. Now, what is covering here? The one which is covering here is called as an external intercostal membrane. So, from here you have the external intercostal membrane. The external intercostal membrane covers from here. It is only a membrane which covers anteriorly. So, this is very important. If you know the anatomy, then you can understand the sono anatomy better and how you give the pecto interfacial plane block. So, when after understanding the external intercostal muscle, let us understand what is the internal intercostal muscle. Internal is uh, deep to the external intercostal muscle, point number one. Point number two is that the direction of the fibers are exactly opposite to that of the external intercostal. They are directed like this. They are directed like this. The internal intercostal muscles are directed like this. That means to say they are directed posteriorly and downwards, posteriorly and downwards. And external intercostal muscle, they are, the, the function is to elevate, elevate the ribs and the internal intercostal muscles, the function is to depress the ribs. Now, deep to the internal intercostal muscle is the innermost intercostal muscle. So, this muscle, what you can see here, is the innermost intercostal muscle. There is no fascia which is separating the internal and the in internal and the innermost intercostal muscle, but this neurovascular bundle is the one which separates these two internal and the innermost intercostal muscle. The neuro uh, neurovascular bundle is usually placed at the costal groove which is at the inferior border of the rib and the internal 
innermost intercostal muscle is covering this costal group. So, in between the innermost and the internal, you have this neurovascular bundle from above downwards, superior to inferior, it is a vein, artery and the nerve, van, vein, artery and the nerve. So, after understanding the thoracic intercostal muscles, let us understand this is the pectoralis major muscle which is overlying these muscles. This whole thing is a pectoralis major muscle which is being deducted and below that you have the intercostal muscles. Now, let us understand the anatomical features of the transverse thoracic muscle. The transverse thoracic muscle. So this is very important. The transverse thoracic muscle as we can see, they are shaped transversely as the name suggests. The transverse in direction. The transverse in direction. And they are, they are in the shape of a star. The shape of a star. That's why they, they also are called as triangularis. A different name for transverse thoracic muscle. As we can clearly observe, the transverse thoracic muscle is thicker in the lower part of the sternum as compared to the upper part of the sternum. So, this transverse thoracic muscle is slightly thinner than that of this transverse thoracic muscle and they are deficient in the first intercostal space. There is no transverse thoracic muscle in the first 